Let me take the time to show you that I care. Let me find a way to tell you what I can express in words. Just a touch from you is all I need to see me through this life. When my time is gone, I know I'll see you Thank you. 
to everyone and for all the people that he interviewed, and I see many of you here. Um, he loved you all. He, he just, he was such a, a good personality and I'm just so honored to have known him. I'm going to take a little words for <laughs> And, um, you know, I don't get nervous that much anymore because I'm so used to being in front of people, but I feel like I'm going to take a little words for <laughs> And, um, you know, I don't get nervous that much anymore because I'm so used to being in front of people, but I feel very nervous because I really feel like he's here and I want to do a good job. I feel like he's standing around, like, like smiling, going, it's great. A um, couple of things I want to say. I met Nick very early on in my music career at the Free Times Cafe with Tim Maxwell. I remember I met you guys at the same time you came and uh, he listened to my performance and he came up to me afterwards and he just thought that my songs were so great and um, I didn't really know who he was but then I realized he was like this well-known poet and it was such an honor um, because I, at the time I mean I was very insecure about writing and performing and uh, didn't really know you know, my purpose. But um, I realized that uh, we were both very much the same and we had a lot of things in common. We were both visual artists and, uh, and we were both songwriters. And, uh, and I ended up being a radio host like Hannah. We were both given the job somehow of um, celebrating other people's art in our communities. and. Uh, uh, he had me as a guest on his show many times and always said to me, you know, anytime you want to promote anything, just uh, just call me up and come on the show. But, you know, I never wanted to take advantage. So he would just sometimes just email me, you want to come on the show? And he would just uh, always have me, you know, he celebrated me as an artist and, um, and that meant so much to me. And I was very blessed to uh, have sung on that song, Angel of the Real, that he asked me to sing many years ago. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as soon as I found out that he died, you know, I realized that he had sent me that song a couple of months ago because they had reworked it. And uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe that that existed. And uh, I had completely forgotten about it. And, uh, you know, we just have to live our life to the fullest every day and be really creative. He was a real champion of the arts, of poetry, of music, of visual arts, and uh, and we all have to do that for each other because there aren't enough champions of the arts. <laughs> so, um, um, I'm going to sing for Nick the first song that I ever wrote and played in public uh, in my adult life. I actually never performed when I was a kid, but I've been writing songs since I was 13 years old, and I finally had the courage when I was 40 to get up on stage and sing, and this was the first song that I ever sang, and he always said it was quite good. So forgive me if I break down a little bit, but this is the other side. It's the title track of my first album. trace his steps back He needs to do something about where he's at He needs to find a bridge and cross over Take a leap to the other side Where he can see more clearly He needs to do something about where he's going He needs that fix to make him sober He's waiting for the moon to rise and somehow it will all make sense in the past tense in the moonlight the future will unveil its bride when he finds his way across to the other side This 
swallows heart His heart weighs like a stone But he's not alone Surrounded, confounded, spinning around and round Blindfolded, arms out Waiting to hang on to Whatever is in front of him Oh, so he can hold his ground Somehow it will all make sense In the past tense, in the moonlight The future will unveil its bride When he finds his way across to the other side And somehow it will all make sense In the past tense, in the moonlight The future will unveil to the other side when he finds his way across to the other side that we all have with, with Nick, Michael, Mike. Um, I'm, I'm going to read this one poem uh, that I wrote just uh, this week. I was actually in Vancouver on Thursday when my husband called me and said uh, Nick had died. I was just numb. And I had to keep going because I was there for business. And then every time I stopped, I'd be like, no, this isn't real. It's not real. And then Saturday night, 2 o'clock, Sunday morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm awake, and I'm like, I've got to get home. I have to be here. So Air Canada managed to find me a flight on Sunday night at 10.30, and I got in yesterday morning at 6.30 in the morning. But I know he wanted us all to be here. So this is what I wrote for him. One of the last postings that I saw on Facebook was, Nick thanks Ella Scott at 11.40 on September, 9, uh, September 17th. So I, I looked at that and I, this is what I wrote. How were we to know that you only had hours to live? How could we have possibly known? Did you? That's what I keep asking. How are we to understand that one second you would still be here and then not? Why is this news, this wrenching, wretched, unadulterated, wounding moment of your dying, of your no longer being part of our lives, not broadcast on CBC, on The National, on CNN? Because that's what it feels like. A seismic tear in the hearts of a thousand people. A ripping of joy and hope and love from each one of us and I'm so angry I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. We love you, whole in our souls. Breathe. There's no getting around the sad, astonishing truth. The shocking, hurtful, numbing fact is real. Nick, Michael, Uncle Mike, brother, son, and friend. Oh, such a friend. Your voice is only in our memories now. But I'm left with such a gift, that exclamation of joy that I heard from you last Thursday, working on your last CD, now your legacy, now finished. Mosh, that's fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> your that moment of happiness I was so thankful to have heard that's what I will remember and then I realized that all of us have a moment like that 
to remember you by. So I say to you, Nick B, I'm truly grateful to have known you. Thank you. Goodbye, and I love you. featured many main poets and loved it. My heart was in the open mic, the bringing up the new up and coming, the brave enough to get up there. And one night as I was doing the open mic, there was a guy standing in the corner, out of the light, not even looking around in a tattered pea coat. I thought, <laughs> so he just didn't seem to be able to come over to me. So I went over to him and I said, you here for the open set? He said, oh, very, almost I'm sorry I wasn't your boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, made room for him. And this was turning out to be his second um, uh, poet, poem in public. And very shy. But even then he had presence. This is before mascara, <laughs> before <laughs> silver change, before all of that. Just a tattered pea coat. And how would I have ever known that night that for years I'd be helping him keep that coat together, mending it, finding a new button, <laughs> and, and becoming my best friend. And more my best friend because I never had brothers or sisters. So he became my official brother, my best friend. And haven't we all heard that term all over the place today, okay. yesterday, this week? That was the gift of Nick, of Nick Beat. He made everybody feel he's my best friend. Even if you've known him for a week or years, he just had that warmth, that gentle warmth. And I'm not saying, because I knew him a long time, that he couldn't get a little feisty. But <laughs> a gentle, gentle soul. And aren't we all? Oh, we're so damn lucky that we knew him. We're so, so damn lucky. this bill and do this and that and I could do so many good things for the world. And then I'm thinking, Nick, he was practically a pauper. Look, look what he did with nothing. No money. He helped so many people. A friend to all and gentle and such humility. We'll miss you, Nick. privilege this past year and a bit working with Nick. Nick came to me and, and, and I write, uh, I help artists do grants uh, both for music and for poetry and we got Nick a grant from the Ontario Art Council. He was so excited and he was worried that he didn't have enough credentials to get a grant as a poet and he got it easily. Actually I talked to the lady at the Art Council today and she's like yeah I mean I wish he was alive. I wish we could do something posthumously with him. And we're figuring out how we're going to do that. Um, you know, for a year, Nick would come in, and he'd walk into the studio, and he's like, before he even took his coat off, he's like, I got an idea! I got an idea! And he would come in, and I'd have to rush to get the microphone set up so he could still have that idea and be on the ball. And he loved doing it. It was the greatest privilege for me to be a collaborator on it, because I was like a kid in the candy store. 
You know, they got that check from the Ontario Arts Council. He's like, I'm going to get all these people, and I'm going to pay the money to help me do my art. Yeah. That was his, I think he was so proud of, he could actually pay you guys a bit to come and work in the studio. Even though I know you guys would have done it for free. <laughs> he was just happy to be able to pay you a little money, because he knew that, you know what, as much as we suffer for art, we got to eat. And you know yeah. what? You know, most people, when they say, well, what do you do, you know, Nick's the only person I know who I can say he's a poet. That's what he woke up every morning, well, every afternoon. Because <laughs> we, we used to have a battle. Like, I'd be like, well, let's, 11 o'clock. He's like 3 in the afternoon, and we kind of usually settle around 1 for the session. And, uh, you know, guys, you are going to be in a treat for an amazing CD. Phase and Falling, I've done a lot of uh, music in my life. This is, I think, the proudest thing that I've ever put my name on and co-produced with someone. And, uh, and it's just a shame that he left and he's making me do all the paperwork. <laughs> you know, I know Nick loved the Beatles. And uh, I'm going to do a little song for you. If you know it, sing along. Jeff, it's in the key of G.